like a fighter for helicopters. Right, right. That's exactly how it's used. I mean, its only job is to attack. We can't pick things up, we can't drop things off unless it's ordnance. So yeah. there's nothing else I would rather be flying than the uh, than the Z. It's, uh, it's a very capable asset. And when you put a capable asset in the hands of very capable pilots, it's, uh, it's deadly. Its only job is to attack, and it does a very good job of doing that. Um, and obviously the, the weapons and the weapons effects are, uh, are pretty good. All right, so right now we'd be getting that target in the sensor. It should be pre-pointed. I was trying to check that, but I'm not sure if it did or not. Right now we've got rockets selected. We'll push in. Uh, we've got a column of tanks, looks like, in the open. Technical vehicles painted in the picture. Right now we're going to pull a little pitch. See to the right side. We're going to be doing a pop attack. Hey, firm. Yeah, this will be a cruise attack, so he's going to be on our left side because we're a right pull. <laughs> APU failed the factor. All right, I'm going to pop a little earlier so we can get uh, eyes on the target sets. We're about two clicks out. Pop it. Pop it. All right, off the nose, you see that beaten zone? That's about where our targets are. Cali. Got gun selected. Working reticle. Feeling some G's there? Oh yeah, big 1.8. <laughs> no big deal. What was that like a 30 degree dive? Uh, that's about 30 degrees. Yeah, you want anywhere from 25 to at 45. Obviously, the steeper the dive, the tighter your CEP is for your rounds and everything that are impacting and your rockets. The shallower your dive, the more you're going to sail them um, or uh, shorten it. Go to back to Red Dog. I have multiple squares proceeding westbound. Request immediate reattack. Same nine line, same restrictions. Red Dog, a 1 1 copy all, same nine line, same restriction. Break, trail left. Trail left. Coming in hard right. Two, digital. Yeah, that 20 mil comes right into the cockpit. It makes you feel alive a little bit. I love it. Yeah, you should feel it. Hey, shift your target set to the near target set. Say again. Shift your target set to the near one. It's a group of three. Copy. Red Dog, 1-1 one, one flight, cleared high. Red dog, 1-1 one, one flight, NC-50. Alright, right here. Shack Back. City, off left. Left up with visual. Visual. Yeah, this is a cool experience. You feel like you're, you know, on the ground. It's, uh, from the, uh, from the other jet guys that I've flown in the front seat, it's a, uh, it's a completely different sight picture of yeah. the objective Good effects, area. Red Dog. Standing by for BDA. Red Dog, ready to copy. Red Dog's got, uh, looks like multiple technical vehicles, uh, about 25 KIA in the objective area. I'm not noticing any other movement out there. Any chance I can get a shot at the controls? Yeah. Yeah, you want controls? Sir, yeah. Your controls. My controls. Got it. Can we just fly circles? Yeah, try to uh, just go straight and level first, and then um, keep an eye on him. You can come easy right. One two's coming out. One two one zero. Visual, we're at your left nine. Yep. There you go. But you see, see how you get a little more feedback in the aircraft, obviously, yeah. than the than the simulator. Yeah. So like, you know, if you were jerking on that collective on the left side, like you would you would know because it takes a little effort. We got an F-35 pilot piloting. Ha. Watch out. Crushing it. <laughs> All right, then add some power and give a little right turn, like a standard right turn, out to 30 degrees or so. So I'm going to push the... There you go, just like that. Button in. Yep, yeah, button in first, and then you move the controls. There you go. And then you can increase the, the turn to a little bit more. A little more... And that's about 30 degrees, and as you're doing that, add a little more power. Because, okay. um, you know, same th same deal, so like your your lift vector is changing with the big fan on top, so the, the more you turn, the more power you're going to need to maintain your altitude. Copy. 
Before we move on, our data is everywhere, and unfortunately, there's no meaningful policy to protect it. Last November, researchers at Duke University published a year-long study investigating data broker websites that sold U.S. service members and veterans' personal information. Here's a conclusion. Our ability to purchase sensitive, individually identified, non-public information about military personnel with almost no vetting, including from a .asia domain, for as low as 12 cents per record, underscores the substantial risk. Meaningful policy action is needed to address this ecosystem and mitigate national security risks facing the United States. That's why today's video is sponsored by Aura. They're an all-in-one digital safety toolbox that can identify these data brokers and then submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally obligated to remove your data if you ask them to, but often they make it challenging to do so. They also offer credit and identity monitoring, antivirus, VPN, password management, and more. Aura is a U.S.-based company with a 100% U.S.-based support staff. Go to Aura.com hazard to get your first 14 days free. Now back to the action. What's the path to becoming a helicopter pilot? Yeah, so for uh, for marine, marine pilots, everyone goes through flight school down in Pensacola. Um, you start out with, uh, right now they're flying the T-6s. Uh, so you learn on fixed wing first. Then you go through like your, uh, your standard familiarization flights, your form, your aerobatics. And then uh, from that point on, you move into selecting, do you want rotary wing, do you want fixed wing, uh, do you want transports? And then uh, you go learn on, uh, when I was going through a while ago, it was the Jet Rangers down at uh, Whiting Field in Pensacola, Florida. So you learn on helicopters, and then once you complete helicopter training, it's about 50 hours in your fixed wing platform, and then another 50 or so in the, in the rotary wing. And then uh, based on needs of Marine Corps and what you wanted to fly, you kind of select. Do you want Cobras, Hueys, 53s, Ospreys, that kind of thing. And then, uh, you know, you get racked and sacked, and some get lucky enough to fly the Zulu. I really want to get you to shoot. But. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> contacting the target. Okay, you got it. You want to take double tap, take gun? Yeah, sounds good. Go for it. How do I take control? Uh, up, two clicks up on the gun. To select it again. All right, and now hold the quick draw button. Pop it slow. And you should get a gun reticle. All right. And now you're armed. Pull the trigger. There you go. Keep it down. Hell yeah. Uh, there you go. All right, we're safe. Off left. Safe off left. That was Hazard crushing the gun. Nice. This ain't his first rodeo. <laughs> Transition I'm ever yet. <laughs> I love the smell. You don't get that in my program 35s. <laughs> yeah, you're already gone before that cloud of smell comes in. Yeah, it wakes you up. <laughs> How is this to fly compared to like uh, something you'd find at an airport, like a civilian flight school? Oh, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't even compare. Like the even the even what you learn on it uh, at flight school in Pensacola, like the, we had the uh, you know Bell two like a jet ranger, uh, like a news helicopter, and it was. It's maneuverable, but I mean, the top speed's maybe 80, 90 knots. Um, it's like a station wagon, kind of. This is like your the Corvette or the Ferrari or something. Yeah. Um, is it is it doing anything uh, fly-by-wire to help you? Uh, so the hide system, we've got CSBAs, which is uh, basically boost actuators, uh, cyclic stick boost actuators. So when you're moving the cyclic, you've got uh, the redundant hide system. It's got 3,000 PSI that's helping you push into the controls. So there's no fly-by-wire or anything. Everything's hydraulic. Um, that actuates, you know, pitch change links um, and everything in there. So it, that assists you. you know, if you lose, like, your hide one, you lose your CSBAs. So it's still flyable, and you lose a couple channels in your SCAS. But um, it's just, it gets a little more uncomfortable. you, know, you got to put a little more effort into turning the thing. What about the auto throttles? Like, so I'm not having to twist... Uh uh, collective here. Right, yeah, so that's uh, basically it's it's automatic fuel metering based on power required. There you go. You can find 140 knots at 300 feet. That's legit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is fun. 
There you go. And now you see like our closure rate. So we're, we're right now this is probably about what a combat cruise would be. So pretty far separated for helicopters standards. And then cruise would be like three to five rotor diameters. So it'd be it'd be up there with them. Got um, it. And then parade, you're like one rotor diameter. That's for like flyovers. Yeah, flyovers or uh, you know to yeah to the ship where you do a the brake at the carrier brake. Uh, you just don't want everybody, everybody all strung out when it's time sensitive to get everybody in for a landing. Well, thanks for flying sweet air, man. It was a good time. <laughs> got, to, got to cruise nice. around a little bit, rip some rockets, and smell 20 mil. <laughs>